Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. And today we'll be talking about migrating Windows workloads to AWS. So when working with my customers, these are the common areas that come up in our discussions. One is moving Active Directory to, into AWS. The others are files, moving file servers, SQL servers, and web and application servers to AWS. So let's dive into it. So with regard to moving Active Directory into AWS, Let's walk through it by walking through a simple example here. Let's assume we have a company called example.com and they have an AD force corp.example.com and it's running in their on-premises data center and they want to move that Active Directory into AWS. So really the first step is establishing network connectivity between your on-premises data center and the AWS cloud. And this is typically done doing using either a site-to-site -site VPN between your on-premises data center and the AWS cloud or something called Direct Connect. And with Direct Connect, we establish a, a basic connection from your AMPLS network uh, into the AWS cloud. And this is a, a preferred approach for a longer term because you have more control over the networking between your on-premises data center and the AWS cloud. One of the key steps to also consider at this point is also designing your IP subnet adjusting strategy such that the IP addresses don't overlap between your on-premises data center and the AWS cloud. So you want to start designing that IP subnet addressing between uh, both sides at this point. Once you establish that, the next point is to design out and set up your hybrid DNS architecture. What we want to be able to do is resolve resources both in the AWS cloud and on premises using DNS host names. So at this step, we're designing that out. And my colleague has a video on this topic. The next step is to set up Windows servers running on our virtual machines called Elastic Compute Cloud, EC2. And we have images for Windows servers. So you can spin up a Windows servers within minutes. So the next step is really to spin up some uh, Windows servers in AWS. And as part of that process, we wanna also uh, do a DC promo where we promote those uh, machines to be domain controllers in your existing AD force. Now these domain controllers could be in a new AD domain in that force or in a separate domain. Most of my customers choose just to create, uh, just to join up the, the existing domain to make it simple. But by doing this step, you've basically extended your Active Directory force on premises into the AWS cloud. A key step to also consider at this point is also to set up the appropriate AD subnet objects and site objects and site link objects to ensure that AD replication occurs between your on-premises uh, domain controllers and the AWS cloud. Now, once you have that set up, what I wanted to highlight also a service that we have called the AWS Managed Microsoft AD. And this is the Active Directory service that we provide where we manage the domain controllers for you. And this can be used in a couple of scenarios. First of all, if you have an on-premises uh, Active Directory like this example shows, a lot of our customers choose to put their resources and join the servers that they create in AWS rather than joining it to their on-premises force. They actually create a managed Microsoft AD and they join those resources to this force and make it what we call a resource force architecture. Microsoft also calls this the red force architecture where we're separating the resources from the accounts where your existing AD will become the account force and we establish a one-way trust between the Microsoft Managed AD and the domain controllers. So to give you a sense of what this is, uh, I wanna go through a quick demo. I also highlighted a session here from reInvent, which goes into greater detail on Microsoft Managed AD. So in this demo, I wanna give you an overview of what AWS Managed Microsoft AD is. So I'm here in the management console and to get to the Managed Microsoft AD, you would type in directory service here and select directory services. And what we're going to do here is go up to the upper right and select setup directory. And we're going to pick AWS Manage Microsoft AD. And now you have a choice of two options here, the standard edition or the enterprise edition. I'm going to choose the standard edition and really the differentiator here is how big the AD database you anticipate it to be. If it's about a gig, which will store up to 30,000 objects, you can change standard edition or enterprise edition if you need more uh, basic AD database space. Now here's here where you specify the uh, DNS name for the force. I'm going to go ahead and pick corp 
I'm going to say corp3 since I already have a corp. And here is where you specify the net BIOS name for the AD4s. And then you can give a description here, test AD forest. And then here is where you give a password for the administrator. And it asks to confirm that. And then you hit next. Now you select the virtual private cloud that you want to create this in, and also the subnets. So what's happening here is that uh, when you, we set up the AD forest for you, we recommend setting it up in two different availability zones for high availability. And notice it's being set up, we're going to say set up one domain controller on US East 1A and one domain controller on US East 1B. Hit next. And it gives you a review of what's going to be created. And hit create. So basically what we have done in three steps is create a new AD forest with two domain controllers running across two availability zones for high availability. So hopefully this gives you a sense of what manage uh, AWS Manage Microsoft AD is. If we set up an AD force, so we go ahead and manage, do the backups and the patching for you. So let's jump into the slides. So the next area that comes up is how do we move one of your existing on premises file servers to AWS? So when you have file servers on AWS, the simple thing is to really set up new Windows servers on AWS running on EC2 and make them the file servers and just copy the data across. But I also want to talk about a managed service we provide for Windows file service is called Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. And what this is, is a managed Windows file server service offering that we provide where we manage the servers, do the patching, the backup of the servers. And to get more information on this, I highlighted a session down here from reInvent where you can get more data, uh, more background on this. But with that, I want to go ahead and jump into a demo of this so you can see it. So in this demo, I want to give you a quick glimpse of what FSX for Windows File Services is. So I'm here I am again in the AWS console. I'm going to go ahead and type in search in the search FSX. Click on FSX here. It's going to take me to the FSX service. And here I'm going to go ahead and create a file system on FSX. And we have two types. In this case, I'm interested in the FSX for Windows File Server. And here I can give it a name. So I'm just going to say Dean FSX demo. And I specify the amount of storage I want on this file server. So I'm going to go ahead, a file system, Let's say 300 gigs. I can actually specify that throughput capacity as well, but it's going to interpret, uh, give me a default. You can actually change that. And it's going to ask me where I want to create this. So what VPC, what availability zone, what subnet. If I want to have a, if I have an existing security group that I want to use to prov provide access control against it, I can specify that. If I want, I want to integrate this with AD, I can either join it to a AWS managed Microsoft AD that we created or a self-managed, which means that let's say you have AD running on premise and you want to integrate this with your on-premises AD, you can pick that as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick the uh, AWS managed Microsoft AD. And now here I can pick if I want it encrypted with the insert key and I can specify some additional maintenance options here. So by default, as I mentioned earlier, we'll back up FSX every day and you can give it uh, how, how many uh, days of retention you want to keep on the backups. You can specify a maximum of 35 days. And we also do uh, maintenance on the on the FSX. So in terms of patching, so you can specify what window or if you have no preference, you can select this. Or if you have a certain preference on when you want it to be patched, uh, specify a 30 minutes maintenance window. And with that, you hit next and then you hit create. So basically in a couple steps, you can create a Windows file server that will be managed for you by AWS. So with that, let's jump back to the slides. So the next topic is moving SQL servers to AWS. So you have most of our customers have on-premise uh, Microsoft SQL servers. They want to know how you can host SQL servers in AWS. And we have two options. You can again uh, set up a Windows server running on our Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 virtual machines, and then install SQL server on it. And you would have basically a SQL server running on EC2 VMs. Or we also have a managed SQL Server offering, which means we manage the maintenance and the patching and the backup of the SQL servers for you. And I have some, another link down here to give you additional information on SQL Server and AWS here. But I thought I would jump into a quick demo showing you Amazon SQL RDS. 
So here I am in the AWS console again. I'm going to go ahead and type in RDS. Pick relational database service. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that database. And you see here the different type of uh, managed service offerings that we provide for our relational database services. In this case, I'm going to pick SQL Server. And here you can pick the different editions of SQL Server. I'm going to go ahead for this example, just use SQL Server Express. And it's going to ask me you know, what version of that to use. So we're, and we're constantly adding new versions as Microsoft releases new versions here. So I'll pick SQL Server 2017. You can pick a template. You specify the DB identifier, your credentials here for the admin user. You can pick the instance size. So basically SQL Server is running on a virtual machine. Here you can pick the size of the machine that's going to be running upon. You can pick now the storage. In this case, uh, what that you want. In this case, it's the minimum here is 20 gigs. You can increase it. And if you want to auto scale the storage, if you're I uh, can auto scale the storage as you know as you reach different thresholds. Then you can also specify what uh, network you want to put this SQL Server in, and whether or not you want to have SQL Server authentication or Windows integrated authentication. You can specify the directory here, and uh, I'll go ahead and into some of the additional configurations. There's a lot of different parameters that you can set, uh, whether you want to have automatic backups enabled, and we can do we'll do automated backups. And one of the things I'll mention here is that we will keep up to 35 days of backup, but you also can do manual backups. Uh, this is the automated, and with your manual backups, you can keep those for as long as you'd like. Uh, you can enable something called performance insights, uh, encryption, monitoring, and when you want the maintenance window to be, you can specify the maintenance window here. And if you want to enable the delete protection where it'll actually confirm and you actually have to uh, come back in and uncheck this box before it'll let you delete the database to prevent accidental database deletion and gives you a rough estimate of the cost here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the database. And what it's gonna do here is go ahead and start creating basically this SQL Server running that version of the SQL Server on it. So basically in a couple of clicks, you can have SQL Server running on a Windows Server in a managed fashion where we'll manage the backups and the patching for you. So with that, let's jump back to the slides. Okay, the fourth topic I want to cover is moving web and application servers to AWS. So a lot of my customers have IAS web servers and application servers running .NET in their on-premises data center. And you can move those over and run those on virtual machines running on EC2 and set up Windows IAS web servers and .NET application services you have on-premises. We also have a variety of managed service offerings to support applications, for example, Elastic Beanstalk. Now, if you're also considering potentially refactoring these applications, uh, we provide AWS Lambda, which is our serverless offering. A lot of our customers are also looking at refactor their on-premises .NET applications and running it on .NET Core and potentially running it in a container. So we provide Elastic Container Services, ECS, or if you're looking at Kubernetes, EKS. And I provided a link here to get more information on this as well. So when we talk about migration, I want to highlight a service that we have called Cloud Endure. And what Cloud Endure provides is the ability to migrate from any source, uh, supporting a wide range of OSs and applications and databases. And how it works is, this, in this picture gives you a sample of how this works. Uh, on the source servers in your on-premises environment, or it could be any cloud, for example, GCP or Azure, we would install an agent on those servers. And what that agent does is it looks at the disk and a block level, it, it copies change disk blocks over to the AWS area. And so we have a staging area where we're uh, basically taking these changed disk blocks and these blocks are compressed and encrypted for security. And it goes into a staging area. And when you're ready, you're, you uh, or if you wanted to test the migration, you can have a test where it actually create copies of those servers running in AWS. And you, what we recommend in this process is that you test the migration a couple of times until you're comfortable that it works. And when you're ready, actually perform the, the migration. This technology can also be used for disaster recovery where you may want to have a DR copy of your servers running in AWS as well. So as I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, Cloud Endure supports a wide variety of applications and gives you a highlight here of some of them. Uh, databases, operating systems, and the source infrastructure can again be your physical on-premises data center, VM, where uh, servers, Hyper-V, Azure, and some of the other platforms here, and we're gonna migrate those over to AWS. And so for next steps, what I highly recommend is if you're, uh, I kind of went through this at a rapid pace, but we can set up a migration readiness plan for you and basically contact your account team and we can walk you through this. And it contact, uh, consists of these three high-level buckets here where we will perform a migration assessment, a ready, develop a readiness and plan, and then work through the uh, migration operations. And here's a bunch of links that I highlighted earlier, but I summarized here. Uh, on the different services that we cover. I also wanted to highlight here, uh, there's actually a YouTube channel for Cloud Endure and on the cloud, I didn't go through a demo here, but you can actually, they have actually a, a really good demo video there that walks through how to do, how Cloud Endure can help with the migration. So I highly recommend taking a look at that. And with that, I wanted to thank you for your time and hopefully we'll see you at reInvent. Take care.